Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the second part of my making a bassline track from scratch series. Uh, today, we're just going to get straight into it. We've got some stuff from last time. So if you've not seen the last episode, make sure you go and check that out because otherwise you might kind of struggle to understand what's going on because there'll just be a bunch of stuff that you've not seen me make. Also, before the video starts, I should say that I've got a track coming out on the 19th. So make sure you go and in the description, you can pre-save that now. Uh, so yeah, make sure you go and pre-save that. And yeah, let's get straight into making some more music. So uh, last time we did, so, well, we just kind of did some random bits really. So we've got this start of drop. And we've also got this vocal uh, with just some random piano bit underneath that we're going to make sound a lot better. So, yeah, so what I was thinking, we can do a little bit of structuring. Uh, just start off with, because... Like the structure of a lot of tracks, or at least my tracks, tends to be the same. And you can do that with your own tracks, kind of keeping the structure the same in a lot of them, but also differing it. So they're not all the same, but they're kind of similar. It's, it's kind of weird to explain it without sounding like I'm just talking nonsense. But uh, I'm just going to grab a crash sample here. Uh, I like this one. Just to whack it at the start. So this is going to be the start of the song and then I'll whack the crash through the drum bus. Um, and yeah, that's good. I'll cut out the low end because there's nothing important down there. Oops. So yeah, uh, if you can't see what I'm doing, I'm holding on this and dragging up and down and it changes the shape. So we've got a low shelf, I believe that's called. I should know that. I think it's called that. Uh, and we'll just... Yeah, that sounds good. And also bring that down a little bit and then what I like to do uh, I'll put that down and then what I like to do is add a bit of delay so turn it down to about there and yeah that can sound cool um, and then yeah this is going to be the start of the track obviously because it's at the start uh, so yeah I feel that we should take this maybe try doing it separately from the vocals at the moment and like this is the most generic boring melody you've ever heard. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whack this onto serum, a new serum, and then we can find a cool sound because I'm not 100% sure what sound exactly I wanna go for with it. So I'm gonna have a look through my presets and see what I can find. All right, so uh, I found this preset from, again, from the Evolution of Sound Dark Bass Pack, uh, something that I'd highly recommend picking up because I use it quite a bit and it's just really good. Um, as you can see, I've just layered it on two different octaves because it sounded kind of boring on just one octave, so just layered it. That's a good thing that you can do. Uh, I'll route this to a mix track. And then, I'll tell you what, maybe. I have a, a, a mix of presets saved for like a cool dance piano. Alright, so I've loaded up this thumping, well I'm going to load up a thumping sub kind of thing because I think that'll sound cool underneath what I just loaded up as well, I forgot to say, this dance piano preset, uh, it's just basically, oh wrong channel, a bunch of compression and EQ. Um, and yeah, as I said, I'm going to load up some kind of thumping bass sound, I think I've got one in here, bass for bangers, yeah, that's what we want. make all of these longer because oops they sound kind of strange when they're like cut short and also 
control, so I'm going to side chain the kick to it. I'm going to raise that up an octave because it sounds kind of farty and bad down there. So we've got this kind of simple intro thing, but yeah, it still sounds kind of boring. Hmm. I'm just trying to think what to add. Uh, I'll tell you what might sound cool. A trick I use a lot in my songs. And if you've listened to some of my songs, you might recognize it, but... This should work well. So what we do is we'll click Make Unique. Uh, so yeah, so if we just put this onto a new mixer track, then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my load up my preset for vocals, and then oops, what the heck? I'm not. <laughs> I don't know how I just did that. There we go. Uh, so, and then what we can do is add on a ton of reverb. Hey, I forgot to say, we should just loop this like it's going to sound bad on its own, but... Oops. So uh, then side chain the kick to that, like that. And then I'll solo these two. And whack on the limiter. And you see, it sounds pretty cool. And then I reckon there. What we can do is we can bring in some kind of like. I'll tell you what we can do. Uh, I'll show you a plugin called PG8X that's really useful. Uh, so yeah, this is a free plugin, and here is the preset that I'm using. You can just you can see all the stuff on the screen here that you can use, uh, and it sounds like this. So I whack that there, uh, and I'll just copy all these so that we've got the notes easily, and then go into here. And then, obviously, this current MIDI just sounds silly. So, oops. And then uh, we'll whack this onto a mix preset, onto a mix track, sorry. And then I, once again, have a preset for this. Low Yeet, what a good name. Um, and then I'll side chain the kick to that. So on here we have Camel Crusher. Just to add some harmonics. Uh, compressor. Just to add gain apparently. Uh, and then this EQ. Uh, Love Filter, that's not actually doing anything. So we don't even need that. And then Limiter. That is loud. And then the Limiter for uh, sidechain compression from the kick. But the thing is, we now have like these two fighting for the same frequency space. So what I'm gonna do is 
I'll move these down a bit. And then, so if we select this pattern, so this is the piano, the plucks, and the low subby thing, and then we go into here and do split by channel. And now this is, yeah, that's all of them. It's split all of them up into the individual parts from that. It's just a quick and easy way to do it. I to tell you what, I think at the start it sounds better without it. And also, because it's the start of the track, I, I reckon it might be cool not to give away the whole melody yet. Except the thing is that sounds boring, so what we can do is... Where are my keys? Just here. So we've got a love filter already on here apparently, so if we right click and go and create automation clip for the cutoff and resonance, and then that's made them huge. So, drag them back here, and then turn the cutoff down at the start and up at the end, and have the resonance like that. And then, as you can hear, it adjusts the cutoff like that. I mean, it still sounds like it's missing some stuff, but I mean, the basic start of the track is there. So, uh, and then what we can do here is whack a crash there. Oops. And this sounds all right, but I reckon on this pluck, uh, well, I've, it's got some low end, a little bit, I think. Okay, no, I think it was my imagination, but oh well. I don't even know why I did that, because there's nothing up there. But anyway, I reckon on here some delay. So I reckon on here some delay and reverb could sound cool. I never figured out how to get the stereo working properly on this. Okay, I've just figured it out. So if you adjust that, then it changes like... It changes how much the like echoes are panned, which can create cool effects. Now, I reckon this needs uh, some strings. So what is the plugin called? It is built in to FL Studio. Flex, that's it. Uh, so yeah, we'll pull up Flex and we can copy this PG8X MIDI because that's the same kind of thing we want to go for, except in a much higher octave. Oh, apparently it didn't actually copy that, so that's nice. Um... Oh, I feel like it's fighting too much with the vocals in that octave. Uh, but yeah, so that's sounding all right. Are we We're clipping a bit? I'll fix that in a second.
Okay, uh, so yeah, I was going to fix the clipping. So on Mac, uh, hold Command and Shift. It might be Control and Shift on Windows. And then you can drag, select every channel all the way up to the end. And then if you drag them all down, and then you're no longer clipping. Now you might have to adjust the balance of some stuff. And then uh, I reckon on this part, so where's that subby thing gone? Actually, I think... Yeah, I don't think we use it over there, but here it is, so... This could sound cool. I'm going to turn up the delay and reverb on this. And also the kick up a bit. Uh, so yeah, and on this, the idea I was having is to go and make unique and then we'll edit the drums. And then I was thinking just the first kick. Accept, okay. Only on the first one. And then just at that point, I reckon would be a good place to go into the build up to the drop. Uh, so yeah, I think that's all right at the moment. Like obviously at this stage, it's still quite bare. It's not got all the stuff that we want, but it's getting there. I'll just have a listen to what we've got so far. Yeah, I think that I would have something else come in. I like these turn up a bit through automation or something. And obviously we would have some risers to transition better. Because that's quite a sudden change. Yeah, sounding good, I reckon. And then we've got this rough bit over here, which apparently my laptop doesn't want to play. But anyway, that's just rough, so it doesn't really matter at the moment. But yeah, I reckon that's looking good for the time being. <laughs> 